Hey guys, Shankar here. I hope you guys are well. Now guys, in this episode of the Come Up Starter Kit, I speak with the wonderful Cara Irving, who is a journalist at the Herald Sun. In this episode, we deep dive into her career, and this is a great insight for people who may be wanting to pursue a career in journalism. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Welcome to the Come Up Starter Kit, guys. My name is Shankar, and I have a very special guest with me today, Cara Irving, who is a digital producer and food writer for the Herald Sun. Today, I've brought on Cara to give us a bit of an insight about her career journey. Thank you so much for finding the time, Cara. No worries. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. All right. So let me jump right into it. How are you coping with the new way of life and especially working from home? Well, I'd be lying if I said that it was all peachy keen and it was all fine. Uh, I think um, like most of us, like it, I have good days where it's really good and I'm, I'm happy and I'm positive and productive. But then other days, sometimes I'm a bit sad and a bit down. But I think that's just the roller coaster of lockdown life, really, isn't it? I think a lot of people are going through the same thing and we don't know when we're coming out of this lockdown here in Victoria. So yeah, we just sort of have to buckle up and uh, yeah, just ride through it. Yes, yeah, so true. Very, <laughs> very true. And what about how you or what's your golden nugget to staying sane? Well, I would say uh, food and wine um, <laughs> within moderation. Good. Yes, very good. Uh, uh, but I, I have been um, uh, doing a lot more exercise in lockdown. Like I think that that's my vice. I need to work out like daily. I need yeah. to do meditation um and i i guess in lockdown like that those are sort of my things that i do like i don't really have many hobbies and obviously you know i'm trying to stay in touch with as many people as i can to stay sane but they would be my main things just you know eating eating nice food drinking nice wine talking to people you love and having that balance with working out and meditating yeah lovely how long have you been doing the uh, meditation stuff for I was introduced to doing it, I would say maybe two, two, three years ago. And it was sort of like a coping um, mechanism with stress because I'm a bit of a stress head. And I was sort of taught to, you know, if you do this, these breathing exercises or you start meditating, even if it's just for 10 minutes a day, yeah. um, you, you'll gradually um, become better at meditation and better at sort of reining in those wild thoughts. Yeah. And I thought it was a bit silly at the time, but then the more I did it, the more I got addicted to it because you can actually see it working. Right. So, um, yeah, I've been doing it like heaps in lockdown. Like I try and do it daily. And if I'm not doing it daily, I'm doing it maybe every second day. So I'm trying to stay on top of it. That's like yeah. my little goal. <laughs> I think, I, I think especially with what's going on at the moment, a lot of people could do with a lot of meditation and just ease the mind, right? Especially going through what we're going through. Oh, absolutely. And it's finding what works for you. Like some people might do meditation and they don't like it. They might find it a bit silly, but you know, but they might like going for a bike ride or they might go, yeah. like going for a walk or something. So it's just finding what works for you, I think. Yeah, very good. Okay, good, good, good. All right. So what I wanted to do was give the people a bit of about your journey and understand what it was like to where you have started from and now where you are. So mm -hmm. what was your very first job? Very first job. All right. I'm going to try and keep this section a bit succinct because I don't want to be rambling. Um, but first job it would have been in uh, 2009. So it was my first paid journalism gig. And it was at a, a company called Star News Group. Okay. So um, journalism for me was always my end game like I always wanted to be a news reporter uh, I wanted to write for a big newspaper like the Herald Sun of the Age um, that was my end goal really and when I was in um, high school I didn't quite get the enter score that I needed to get into the course that I wanted to get into because yeah. back then journalism was like 96 at RMIT I think and I was right. nowhere I was not going to get that right. so I Ended up, I wanted to, um, obviously I didn't end up going to university. I went to La Trobe Uni and, and did end up studying journalism, but I did want to try and get a paid journalism gig uh, on the side as well. So whilst I was studying, I wanted to just work at a weekly paper. And I ended up getting a job um, yeah, in 2009. So I would have been 19. Okay. And it, yeah, so it was at a community paper in Pakenham. 
Right. And I just worked there casually on and off for a few months, probably about six months. And that was just filling in for people when they were sick. But it was a good starting point. I really um, feel like I learned a lot and it was good just to sort of get your foot in the door and just be getting published, really. Okay, so that was, that was my first gig. And then, so how did you sort of um, get your hands on that role? Was there things that you had to do or was it just simply applying for that role? I think at the time I was I was very ambitious. I nice. feel like I feel I'm very ambitious, nice. um, but I wanted to just approach as many people as I could. So I ended up finding out the editor of um, the Star News paper out in Pakenham, and I think I might have either called him or emailed him, just asking for work experience. And he uh, said, "Yeah, come on in. We'll do an interview." And I was like, oh my goodness, like I've got this interview. I don't know what to show you because I haven't really had anything published and I haven't um, had that much experience. But he was he was really good. He, he took me on. He, he sort of um, showed me the ropes. And while the job was casual and it wasn't like full-time work where I was consistently learning and growing, it was, yeah. it was sort of good that he gave me that opportunity just from a, I think it was like a phone call and an email. So okay. it, it ended up working out well. <laughs> Very good. Okay. And then what was the next step after that? What was the next role after that? So the next role after that for me was still within Star News, but okay. at that stage it would have been, because it was a casual job that I was filling in, in Pakenham, I wasn't really getting a lot of shifts and right. um, there was an, an opportunity that came up in their telemarine office. So I ended up working there uh, for longer stints at a time and that was really good because I don't, I don't know whether you're familiar with how suburban newspapers work but basically you're given um, a, a patch to cover so you might right. cover a certain suburb and then for that week you have to pretty much fill a little paper um, back then anyway I don't think there's many um, community newspapers out there at the moment um, sadly but yeah it, that was a good, um, I suppose, learning tool for me because it actually taught you how to find, you know, find news. You had to find a really good news story for the front page. You had to find pictures to fill the paper. Right. Uh, you had to find a mix of stories. They couldn't all be like crimes and murders and terrible things. You had to balance it. So I ended up getting really stuck into doing that. And, uh -huh. and even though that it was casual, it was a bit more than, uh, you know, filing a story about. Um, you know, the, the local knitting group or something like right. that I was doing back in Pakenham. It was um, a bit more juicy and a bit more newsy and I really enjoyed that. Lovely. Okay. And then from there, what was uh, the role after that? Well, after that or around that time, there was a bit of a moment in my career which I feel like um, for me, it definitely reassured me um, that I was on the right path and I was yeah. doing the right thing. And uh, people probably won't be familiar with it now, but I, um, because it happened almost 10 years ago now, yeah. but I was in my final year of uni and I had come across a, a news tip um, that I thought that would make a really good story and it needed to be told. And essentially what it was about was, um, this was back when Facebook, I think it was in 2011 when that was sort of coming up in Australia and the whole messenger and chat and private yeah. private groups thing was around. Um, there was a private group called the Brochal Network. So it was a group of guys essentially um, inviting all their mates to this private group that had thousands of members. So no one could be, you could only be added in by people who were in the right. group. But what they were doing was they were sharing images of like scantily clad women that they knew in their lives without their consent. So they were pretty much just sharing like pictures of women in bikinis and lingerie and putting it on this group and all these other guys were like raiding the women and it was quite sick stuff. Yeah. And I ended up finding out that there were some AFL footballers who were on the group and doing that. Right. And I was, at the time, I was like thinking, okay, there's a story in this. We ne I need to do something about this. Right. But being in my final year of uni, I, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I can't just write this from, from my local paper. Like I need to go and this needs to be told more broadly. Yeah. So I ended up uh, pitching the story to my lecturer at the time and uh, said to him, look, I think this is, there's something in here. I need to, um, need to write this. So he was really good. I ended up spending the whole day just running the story, um, you know, working with this lecturer on the story and then ended up calling 
up the age at like six o'clock at night wow. and we pitched the story and then I'll never forget what they said. They sort of just said, look, if, if the Pope, unless the Pope doesn't get shot, this is going on the front page tomorrow and it's an exclusive. Oh, wow. And, and I was just like, are you serious? Like I was thinking, why have they just decided to run this story by this? Like, I think I was 20 years old at the time. Like, no, they had no idea who I was, just sent them this story and they were like, I'm just going to publish it. So they ended up publishing it on the front page, right. which was phenomenal. Like I couldn't believe it. Um, and from there, it just took off. Like everyone was reporting on it. It was on the radio, it was on the TV. Um, all these football players were getting questioned and, you know, held to account. Right. And by the end of the week, the, the page had completely shut down. And um, all these women were so thankful that they, they were sending me these messages and saying, I can't believe this has happened. Thank you so much. And I think it was just that moment um, in my career, um, even though it was 10 years ago, it was still so... It resonates with me so much because it just made me realize that this is what I want to do. This is why I love journalism. I love being able to, you know, hold people to account and, you know, ch you know, it's so powerful in a way because you can sort of change um, the way the world works in a way yeah. for, for good. So that happened in um, my career and I was on the, on the sort of cusp of trying to get a full-time gig at that stage and whilst that did help, I still didn't get a job in Melbourne after oh. all of that, um, which at the time I was just like, oh my God, like, surely I'll be able to get a job. But right. it, was, it, was, it was good though, but it was, I guess it was a good learning in a sense because it showed me that even, you know, it's, with any career, like things are all about timing and, um, you know, your time to do something. It might not have been, it certainly wasn't my time to walk into the Age or the Herald Sun and start working there, there and then. I had still had plenty to learn I had things to do so um, to, to go back to your question about the next step what happened after that was I ended up applying for pretty much every job that I could find in in Victoria I went to regional papers um, the big papers I tried to work get jobs that I think I went for both the Herald Sun and the age internships at the time okay. didn't get those um, got knocked back for a few other jobs just because there wasn't any work out at the moment but then I was ended up um, off being offered a job in um, Queensland uh, at a paper called the Gladstone Observer, which okay. was a regional daily uh, paper about six hours north of Brisbane. So it was just another regional paper, but it was on the coast. And I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go there. Yeah. I'll just go there, move to Queensland. And it was honestly the best thing I ever did. It right. was so fun. That it was, I learned so much. I got to cover the stories that I wanted to cover. Uh, I got to learn so many new skills like shorthand, you know, taking photos, filming. It was, it was really great. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, that was sort of the next, the next step in my career. And I, yeah, I haven't looked back since. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Okay. And then from there after, what was um, the next step from moving forward from there? So I um, ended up moving to Ballarat. I did two years in Gladstone. Yeah, right. Moved to Ballarat. Uh, uh, oh, goodness, I don't know the year. Um, okay. <laughs> it's too far away. I think it was 2013, 2014. But I ended up moving to Ballarat and did another two years there. Right. And that was that was good. I think my learning in Ballarat was... It was a, a lot bigger than Gladstone uh, and it was a lot more vic obviously Victorian focused. So I was reporting on Victorian news um, and news that could potentially be relevant to Melbourne um, as well. So okay. I was doing that. And, um, and then after about two years there, I wanted to move to a big paper like I knew I, I thought I've, I feel like I've done four years in the regions. I really want to get back and work and live in Melbourne. And funnily enough, as ironic as, as it sounds and contrary to what everyone tells you in journalism, is that you'll never find a job on Seek. There was a job for a Herald Sun news reporter on Seek and I applied for it and I got it. <laughs> okay. And was it, what was this? Did, so you went through obviously the interviews and the rounds of interviews and stuff like that. Was that a challenge for you or? Um, I was really, really nervous because it was <laughs> okay. one of those... 
<laughs> it was one of those moments, like, I guess we've all got goals and dreams. And one of my, my, my career goal was I want to work at the Herald Sun or I want to work at a big metro paper. And they said, come in for an interview. And I was like, oh, wow, what? This is really happening. And right. did my interview and I was so nervous. And I think I said some crazy stuff in the interview. <laughs> and Like, you know, you just panic and you just say stuff. And then afterwards, they called me back and they're like, oh, yeah, you were, the, you were everyone's top pick. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I thought, the job. okay, cool. So I was, um, yeah, it, it was challenging. But uh, I guess at the time, like the, the biggest thing that I remember was I was just so nervous. Yeah. So, so nervous. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Um, all right, so were there any sort of hurdles that you faced throughout your career when trying to pursue your dream? Uh, I would say the biggest hurdle was probably just getting knocked back a lot um, by people in the industry. Um, you know, if you're going for a job, obviously there, were, there was no work. That was probably the biggest thing for me. Yeah. And I think it's not just me. I think there's so many people out there, even at the moment, who are starting their journalism careers, who are just so used to hearing, no, you know, we don't have jobs. You can't, you know, I'm not going to pay you to do this work. You're going to have to work for free to do an internship, to build your portfolio. So it, that was probably the biggest thing for me, but yeah. it taught me to be resilient and to, you know, you've just got to keep going. You've got to, you can't give up. If someone closes one door, it doesn't mean that that's no. It just yeah. <laughs> means not now. So yeah. you've just got to keep at it. Yeah, and that's probably one thing I wanted to ask as well. How did you build that resilience, especially when I think a lot of people, especially in this climate at the moment, uh, you know, they're applying for roles and they get knocked back a whole lot. What, what I guess, sort of gave you that drive to keep going? I guess... <laughs> Like, it's really hard. Like, it's easy for me to say you've just got to keep going. Like, there are days, you know, where I don't even want to keep going. Like, where yeah. you just got to, you've got to, you think, oh, my goodness, I've tried so many times to get this job or I've tried so many times for this thing. But I think deep down, if you really want something, you don't give up on it. Like, it, things will knock you down. You, you'll, be, you'll have people slam doors in your face. But, you know, you, you sort of take a moment, you get back up and you just keep doing it because that is a testament to showing how much you really want something and how much you really enjoy something. Like, that's my biggest thing with, with any career advice. It's like, you never think that you can't do something. Like, just because someone said you can't do something or if you think, oh, I don't think I'm good enough to do this. It's like, I reckon majority of people in industries, like they love what they do and they get the jobs because they just do it like they just go out there and they just don't care what people think and they just keep going like if you keep pestering someone enough like within reason like don't yeah. be a real pest but people aren't going to say no to someone who's really passionate and wants to do it and will work hard to get there so yeah that very would be good advice. advice very very good advice i think that's so so true um mm. all right, so for people that want to pursue a career in journalism or as a digital producer what does a day of a life look like okay so covid <laughs> or post covid let's do, <laughs> do, do post covid then pre covid yeah. and then also during covid okay all right um oh goodness well Maybe we maybe we start pre and then I'll do po um, yep. current COVID. Um, so before coronavirus, um, my day looked like um, pretty much it would start at 8 a.m. So I would come into work. Um, obviously, in that time, I've already listened to all the news bulletins. I've caught up on the news on the tram going into work. Yeah. Um, and then come into work and I will start doing um, some my, my shift which essentially is writing content for online. And okay. I suppose the beauty with, with my role is a lot of it is, uh, it can be news, but it also can be um, with food and wine, which is sort of an, another thing that I, um, I'm really interested in. I've been writing for the Herald Sun for a couple of years now. Nice. So it's either writing a combination of news stories um, um, or food and wine stories and then usually at night um, or in the evenings what I would do would uh, be going out to a restaurant or a bar um, and reviewing that restaurant um, for uh, the paper pretty pretty much so okay. that would be pre-COVID um, which was lovely and a beautiful time feels right. like a distant memory uh, but 
currently now it I'm essentially working from home like everyone else is yeah. and my job is largely news focused um, obviously obviously there's not a lot of uh, food and wine stuff going on because restaurants aren't open for dining in um, there's a lot of takeaway stuff happening and we're still sort of covering the important news when it comes to that but a lot of the content at the moment I'm writing is around uh, yeah coronavirus um, breaking news around coronavirus um, and just general sort of color lifestyle stories okay very good okay excellent and what do you find is the most challenging aspect of your role challenging uh i would say i think there's there's two parts to that okay. like ment mentally challenging i think sometimes in journalism a lot of people um might I suppose be sort of taken aback by how full on the news is at times. I think the longer you do it, and I don't know whether this is a good or a bad thing, but the longer you sort of are in journalism, you build up a bit of a, a thick skin and tolerance to reporting negative news all the time. So I feel like with coronavirus, it has been quite full on to report on. And there's there are days where you're just like, I just can't hear, you know, how many people have got coronavirus I can't hear how many people have passed away so that sort of is a challenge um, but I guess the other thing would probably just to be trying to stay on top of absolutely everything yeah. um, in journalism so trying to stay on top of your workload stay on top of the news um, so you're up to date with everything um, and just trying to yeah, get everything done really yeah okay very good and for people that uh, oh I guess before I even jump into that what you love most about your role oh what do I love yeah. I, I love that I have a job um, that I get to talk to people most days I get to talk to interesting people who are far more fascinating than me <laughs> and and get and do amazing things in the world like you know um chatting to epidemiologists about coronavirus like even just thinking of these people who have just studied for so long and have so much knowledge in a certain field like i love to share their stories um but you know even just it could be anything it could be talking to a chef about this amazing dish they've created or this restaurant they're about to open and or a cafe that they've had on the um, back burner for so many years and now they're finally opening their cafe like i love writing about that i love reporting that news and more recently i really have like a strong passion about food and wine and i love um you know writing about um uh, restaurants in melbourne i love writing about wine i love drinking wine i love eating food and sharing what i thought about it with everyone so yeah. i i feel like i really love that side of things but if i had to choose one thing it, it would be the people and just you know being able to have being so privileged to be able to tell their story yeah lovely okay and for people that are maybe wanting to follow in your footsteps uh what are some key skills that they should have if they do want to pursue something like this I would say you need to be prepared to work hard okay. uh, for to no money for a long time. Right. Um, okay. I think journalism is one of those careers and, and, and as much as I support people getting paid for their content that they write, I think it's definitely one of those careers where you have to earn your stripes. You can't just expect to walk into a job and um, you know be the editor or walk into a job and and be a reporter and you get to go out and you get to interview people like you have to earn um that sort of um, level of respect in this right. industry and that's why i think it's so important like going back to what i was saying about that work experience and working for free and just putting yourself out there you just really need to do that early on in your career like move to the bush and report about you know the knitting club or um, the chess club or whatever you're reporting on in the bush you know go there and, and report those stories i think you need to um you need to do that you need to get that level of grounding and before you even um think about walking into a metro newsroom but at the same time you know if there are people who are very lucky and are very talented who do go straight into those jobs so i think if you've got that resilience the passion for it you love what you do i think there's there's no reason why people won't hire you to work in journalism very good okay good 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 and what is one piece of advice that you have learned throughout your career that you wish you could tell your younger self i would say do not think or 
do not listen to what other, um, actually, I'll reword that, rephrase that, it was going to come out wrong. Don't care too much about what other people think of you. Mm. I think that's something that it's probably taken me a long time to learn and I think I'm still learning that day to day. But I think there's a lot of people out there who might be doubting themselves about, um, am I good enough for this job? Can I work as a journalist or can I work as a food and wine writer? Like at the end of the day, if you're confident um, even if you're not feeling confident, but if you go in there thinking, you know what, I don't care what anyone else thinks of me, I'm just going to go in and do what I love, I think that's something that I would definitely tell myself, um, my younger self. I don't know whether my younger self would have believed it or not, but I would really, <laughs> yeah. I would definitely push that hard on young Kara. Okay, okay, very good. And lastly, thank you so much, but what can we expect from yourself? Uh, as in going forward going in the future? Forward, yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, I, I'm very, very grateful and blessed to have a job during this time, during the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'm very um, happy to sort of keep working within that field and, and hopefully soon get out to writing some more food and wine um, stories. But I'd also love to do television at some stage too. Like I feel like I really love presenting. I love getting in front of the camera, love interviewing people on camera yeah. and talking about food and wine on camera. So maybe hopefully one day... Maybe I'll be on TV. Who knows? I think you will. You, you seem very ambitious and I think you've got the right minds for it. So I think you definitely will get there. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. Not a problem. Thank you so much for your time.